Jason and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Vincent Landau. And he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature features. And all creatures. And all creatures. And the creature gonna get you tonight. You better not turn out your bedroom light. He'll grab your head. Hundit, Sant, Sien, Sto, Sent, Hondreo, Centum, Sata, Stotina, and Centineo. There must be over a hundred ways to say the number 100, but here in our humble abode, we have only one way to portray the first number of the family of three digit numerics. Welcome to the hundredth episode of Creature Features. It feels like 1,000. No oh, pish tosh, Livingston. We won't be allowing your glum demeanor to, to tarnish tonight's wonderful milestone tonight, now will we, Tangella? Mm. Tangella has pointed out quite accurately, I might add, that this is also the hundredth time Livingston has complained about appearing on the show. Not even close. And joining us for our centennial episode will be my dear friend Aaron Brockovich, world-renowned warrior for truth, justice, and the American way. She'll tell us about her many battles taking on large corporations, her numerous television and movie appearances, and what she thinks about tonight's film, which so happens to be 1962's The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Wait, haven't we shown this film before? We did. 81 episodes ago. Well, I suppose that's okay then. Jen in the pan never gets old. So stay with us for yet another justice-filled and pan-headed episode of Creature Features! Stay tuned. Welcome to Creature Features. We are back again with a very special guest. No, this one, this is like a great one. <laughs> no, no, you know, when I tell people I'm going to have Aaron Brockovich on the show, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. We've had like movie stars in that very seat. Tom Sizemore, I told people Tom Sizemore is coming. And they're like, oh, whatever. And I tell them Aaron Brockovich, and they're like, yay. So we are with Aaron Brockovich, the famous, the real Aaron Brockovich, not that imposter in the film <laughs> julia julia, <laughs> Ju julia. she got an academy award for that she did she did a great job she did you know why yeah. because she's got your personality down so well well you know it's funny you should say that you know i've heard people and directors say there's a mannerism or something in there that i don't know well i think she similar. captured it well but she i think you should have gotten one as well for that waitress scene you did <laughs> no you, you saw that huh With you my look name like a real waitress julia you look like a genuine waitress. Uh, that took some acting. I used to be a waitress yeah. in high school at yeah. JB Big Boy. I think we all were. To earn money. Waiter. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to watch with you The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Have you seen it? Got it's a great title, isn't it? The Brain That Wouldn't Die. I like it. You're, you're going to love it. It's okay. 1962. Ooh. Well, hey, I was only two. We were both tiny. Yeah, little, tiny little tots. Can't I wait was to close. see it. I was close to. No. I wasn't born yet, but it's all right. I was. Just I was slightly. born in 60. You, you were not old enough to appreciate it. Now you're going no, to appreciate it. it. All right, so let's go ahead and start this film. You stay with us. You I guys will. stay with us. It's going to be a fun one. Don't go away. Bye. 
I should have known he was as good as dead when they wheeled him in. You did everything possible, everything you could, Dr. Coria. Everything. Everything except save my patient. Everything in the books. Now, Dad, do I have permission to take over and try things my way? The operating room is no place to experiment. He's dead. I can't do any harm. Very well. The corpse is yours. Do what you want to do. All right. Make an opening into the chest cavity. Apply 100 milliamps of current directly to the heart, then massage by hand. I'll handle the brain area. By yourself? By myself. Because if he's still alive. He is. I just picked up a faint pulse beat. Keep massaging the heart. I am, I am. These electric shocks should stimulate the motor area enough to innovate the heart again. Then he won't need any external stimuli. Keep away from the motor area. You'll paralyze him for good. Which would you rather be, paralyzed or dead? Don't try to play God. Some choices are not yours to make. When the obstetrician has to decide which to save the mother or the child, who plays God then? It's part of the game. Game? The human body's not a jigsaw puzzle to experiment on. Still playing it safe like the other doctors, hmm? Might as well save my breath. Keep massaging the heart. You've already lost your patient, doctor. I'm going to save mine. His pulse is coming back stronger than ever. It's unbelievable. Nothing's unbelievable if you have the nerve to experiment. I've been working on something like this for weeks. In your laboratory? I knew this would work if only I had the opportunity. You don't conduct experiments on people. You should be sure of the results first. I am now. Stop massaging the heart. Let's see if it can take over by itself.
All right. Close up the chest. I'm about to finish with the cerebral area. How's his pulse? Strong and steady. You did perform a miracle. I may not approve of your methods, but I am proud of your results. Well, what have you two planned for the weekend? Oh, nothing much. It's a quiet weekend. Are you sure you're not going up to the country house? You're always sneaking off up there. That place gives me the creeps. I, I should have sold it when your mother died. You can't sell that place. Well, I mean, it's nice to get away from the city. I can work without anyone snooping around. You spend too much time up there. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you both in a few days. Got to clean up and get out of here. Fine operation or not, Bill. You're walking on thin ice. But don't go too far. Oh, every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. I want to kiss you. Bill, I want to get married. I can't stand not having you. You've been wonderful. I'd rather be a bride. In a few more weeks. And nothing will keep us apart. We'll be together. Dr. Cordner. I'm so glad you're here. I was afraid you'd gotten away. There was a very important phone message that came to you. It sounded quite urgent. I've been looking everywhere. It was from a man called Kurt. He called from the country place, and he said something terrible had happened. He wanted you to come right out. Thank you. Well, you've always wanted to know what's kept me away from you so many weekends. And we're back with Miss Erin Brockovich watching Brain That Wouldn't Die. You know, this, this film's going to get worse. <laughs> Bad <laughs> things wait. are going to occur. He looks so <laughs> wonderful right now, doesn't he? He's got an evil streak. But we're not Ooh. here to talk about the film tonight. We're here to talk about you. Hi. Yes. So I'd that, rather talk about the brain that goes on forever. I want to talk about your film. Okay. Or the film named after you. Yes. Aaron Brockovich, Aaron Brockovich, 2001? Came out, no, it was released in 2000. 2000. They began in, I think, no, about 1998. It went pretty fast from the time that I signed the deal to the time it came out. How about did that two years. occur? You know what? That's a good question, but I'll tell you how. It was actually a fluke. Really, it was. I, I think it had to have gone down that way. It couldn't have gone down any other way. Nobody would have believed it. But uh, I was really in a car wreck, and I had ongoing neck and shoulder problems. Like in the film? like in the film. Right. And my sister is an acupuncturist and a chiropractor. Right. And I kept having these problems. She said, I really want you to see a friend of mine by the name of Pam Dumont, who lives in Los Angeles, that I think could help you with some of these ongoing in injuries. So I met with Pam, and every time I went in to have a treatment, she would ask me, where have you been? What are you doing with, you know, dead frogs in your car and your little box of archives and running around in your stilettos and your little BB mini skirts? And so I would start telling her what I was doing in Hinkley and the next oh. treatment I'd tell her, you know, about my family. But what I didn't know was that Pam was also treating a woman by the name of Carla Schomburg. Her husband was Danny DeVito's partner in Jersey oh my Films. Goodness. So one day, Pam says to me, 
well, would you like to meet her? I've been sharing her life with you. And I was like, what? What? And why would you do that? She goes, because you don't think it's odd what you're doing. You're collecting toxic, hazardous waste. You're a single mom. You have no business doing this. You're running around with your boobs hanging out in stilettos. And she goes, it's craziness. So I met with Carla. And I'll never forget the first day I met Carla. Um, I went to her house. I knocked on the door. And Carla is this small, petite, just graceful woman. And here, here I am in heels, six one, the Amazon lady. She opened the door and she looked around and she goes, um, am I on candid camera? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so I'm Aaron. What a wonderful. So um, Carla introduced me to Danny and the whole team, DeVito, and um, here it came. Who knew? So the lawsuit was not even complete by then. No, the lawsuit was starting to get completed oh by goodness. then. Yeah, so oh they goodness. actually started um, doing filming in, oh, I think I signed my rights maybe in late 1997. That they early. moved pretty fast, right. So, but that's how it started. That is incredible. And, you know, Stephen always told me, Soderbergh, he goes, truth is stranger than fiction. This oh, is just is? weird. You know, you, you're a single mom, three kids, you don't have any business doing this, you're running around in stilettos, little mini skirts <laughs> using boobs to your advantage it's like what is this That's and uncovering fabulous. a huge toxic and now situation. you're a hero all right well, oh, we're going to hear some about more that. about this we're going to get back to the film oh, but i want to hear all the details evil. of that because that the was evil brain no that was quite a story this is the brain that wouldn't <laughs> die all right we'll be right back after the next clip stay with us Why haven't you ever taken me up here before? Because the things I'm working on don't need an audience. That telephone call, what about it? All right, all right, hold off the questions. Why the mystery, Bill? What's it all about? We'll be there soon enough. You'll see. I've got to hurry. <laughs> Terrible accident. I've got to save her. I've got to save her. What is it? What have you got there? Kirk, please. Sterilize the tubes and instruments quickly. What are you going to do? Aren't you going to have a look in the closet first? Oh, I can't now. This is more important. The eyelids. I saw them move. It can't be. 
eyes are deceiving me. What you see is real. What's done is done, and what I've done is right. It's the work of science. I remember fire. Burning. Let me die. Let me die. I've had success with transplants. Now I can do it for her. live and I'll get her another body. I can make her complete again. Only a madman can believe that she could ever be like before. Don't argue with me. I love her too much to let her stay like this. I'll restore her as before. You'll see. Can't you realize? Can't you see? There's a pattern to all that lives. An order, an arrangement. She had a heart and a brain. And her spirit was in both, not in one or the other. No. I'll give her a brain and a heart. Yes, and what of her soul? You say you love her and you can remember her love for you. Then how can you make of her an experiment of horror? All the skill and science I possess was meant for this. Life has a pattern. The whole pattern of my life is shaping itself to save her now. Then you intend to go through with it? Yes. Sleep, my darling. Rest and grow stronger. do you think we can keep her alive under these conditions? 48. 50 hours at the most. Yes. And you really believe you can work a transplant on her? Successfully? Yes. Like my arm. Withered and deformed. Yours was an early experiment that failed. With her, I'm using my new adreno serum. Must work. I, I've got to go now. If the police or anyone call, tell them you don't know anything about it. I don't think anyone will trace us here because her body was burned in the wreckage. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Look, Bill, before you go, do have a look in that closet. It's the reason why I called you up here. Keep it locked. Last night it got so violent it almost broke out. No. No, not through that thickness. Keep it closed. I've got to think about her now. I've got to find her a body. How are you going to go about getting one? Bill, how will you do it? There are ways. There are ways.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. This is Livingston and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Erin Brockovich in The Brain That Wouldn't Die, but we've got to take care of that thing first, and you know what it is. What is it? Livingston. Letters. Letters from you to us. They're wonderful. What do we got, sir? We have a card. Oh, we have a card. How are you, Tangella? I like your hair. You changed your ribbons. She has her unicorn for a change. Oh, you, you know, she's, she's had that thing for quite some time now. She hasn't brought it out, though, has she? All right, we got a card from uh, Pamela in uh, Hidden Valley Lake, California. I've never been there, but it sounds lovely. Doesn't it? Maybe? It does, All right. indeed. It's a Halloween card. She says, wishing, wishing you a happy Halloween, happy haunting, candles galore, eek, boo, spooky, trick or treat. Clever. It says all that on one card. And inside the card, it says, get your spook on. Wonderful. She says she's been watching Creature Features since 1978. Well, thank you. And it sounds like she's still watching if she sent us a card. She still is. We hope everything is wonderful in Hidden Valley Lake. Pamela, thank you. This is wonderful. We've got to add that to our collection. Indeed. And what else we got, Mr. Livingston? Another one. This is from Neil Friedman in South Africa. Indeed. You know, we just picked up a station in South Africa. You must be watching on that. So this is like the first letter we've gotten from South Africa. It's wonderful. Hi, everyone at Creature Features. I love the show. We're here in South Africa and get your show twice a week. Lucky us. And it's my favorite show on TV. Thanks for making TV fun again, Neil. Well, thank you, Neil. Twice a week. Nobody in America gets it twice a week. They can. They do things twice as good in South Africa, I think. That's my belief. I could be wrong. It's happened before, but only once. All right. And another one. Oh, this one's interesting. It's got two portions. There's a photo. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. Have you seen this? I have. Of course you've seen this. Impressive. But you know who has not seen it is... Uh, well, i got to read it first. All right. Here we go. Hello, Vincent Livingston and Tangella. Thank you for bringing Creature Features back. My boyfriend and I have a standing tradition of staying up late on Saturday night to watch your show. My boyfriend used to watch Creature Features as a kid, and it brings back lots of fun memories for him. I was introduced to it a few years ago when you brought it back, and I love it. Tangella is so much fun to watch that I decided to dress as her for Halloween this year. Although I will never be able to live up to her level of angelic impishness i hope i do her justice oh, with dear. my costume after all i've heard it said that imitation is the best form of flattery and we're going to put this up on the screen here do you see this look it's you he's i know i know i know what do it's you it's the octopi ah it's the octopus it's the exact same one she has Lori, you're amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that's it for letters, right? No more? That's it. All right. If you'd like to send us a letter, you put it in your email address thing and use this address. Or if you'd like to send it to us in the post, simply put it on an envelope, piece of paper, a paper bag, a napkin, and use this address, right? Uh, napkins will not work. Napkins are wonderful. They're, they're approved by the U.S. Postal Service. Trust me. All right, well, we'll be right back with Aaron Brockovich, but first let's get back to the brain that wouldn't die.
took you so long. What made you think I'd come? You know a good thing when you see it. Yeah, there was plenty to see. I liked your act. Is that all you liked? Well, your costume, what there was of it, was interesting. Is that all? The rest of the equipment is standard. But, uh, the arrangement is pretty special. You know, tourists just looking at the sight. What are you doing here, slumming? Well, I get my allowance once a week. Okay, if you're so loaded, you pay for the drinks. I already did. Are you hustling for the house? I hustle for myself. I'm the leading lady around here. I can sit with the squares out front, or I can relax back here with my friends. I'll bet you don't have an enemy in the world. Hmm? When you get done looking, then what? I operate. I get your message. You're coming across. You could flip any chick in the house. Why me? Well, like I said, I'm looking. Well, you don't have to look any further. I'm not going to fake it for you. When do you go on again, hmm? When? <laughs> Relax. I got another show yet, but it could be for you. Oh, I was just asking. Try taking. Are you getting nervous? I'm over 21. No, it isn't that. It's... I've just got things to do. Things to take care of. Well, if I don't exactly make you sick, what could be more important that could be taken care of right now? Well, I've, uh... I've got to see about helping somebody. Somebody who needs my help very badly. You can't cut out of me now, baby. Now when you've got me feeling so good. I'm so warm all over. I'm good for you. I know I'm good for what you want. You may be just what I'm looking for. You got your nerve. Oh, look who's talking. Why don't you haul your beat-up body back to the bar with the rest of the flies? Keep your G-string on. I only came in here to change my clothes. I got admission. Now I'd like to see the rest of the show. Come back in half an hour and maybe you will. Get lost. Hi, lover boy. I see you've met the queen. <laughs> hey. Come here, don't hide. You know, you've got the kind of face a girl doesn't mind looking at. Even out front, all the other girls are asking about you. Get out of here. Two's company. Three's a crowd. Who's to tell me to blow if I don't want to? This here's my dressing room, too. Remember? It kills her to see me make time. You're the only thing that's going to be made around here tonight. Honey. Eat your heart out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I'd better be going, hmm? What for? Look what you've done. You come back me with your two cents. Let me see you later. I'll make everything up to you. I swear I will. Yeah. Come on back later. I'll remember you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. You lousy tramp. Once in a blue moon, I latch into a guy with class, and you messed it up. Eh, what makes you think you had it? He wouldn't have you on a bet. Says who? Says me. What's a guy like that want with leftovers for? Leftovers? Why, you cheap third-rate stripper! You are the only woman! You cheap bleeding hot! I'll match you like a boy. 
And we are back watching the brain that wouldn't die with the brain that doesn't stop, Erin Brockovich. You're so busy, you know. I, I, I don't know how you do it. You're always because the brain doesn't stop. Well, the body you know obviously what? doesn't stop either. I mean, you're so busy. I, and I, yes, I keep really very busy. I, you know, I learned at a young age from my mom, though. Uh, she used to always say, "You can rest when you're dead," and it's your perception. Um, and positive attitudes you keep going well, of the course. brain keeps and going you do all this but I think you still are like living twice as fast as a normal human being all what? the places you go all the events you do all the, the the speaking engagements all the investigative work you even had a TV show I've had a couple of fun little television shows right. one on discovery uh, one on lifetime uh, when the film first came out I worked with Dick Clark on having a talk show that would have been fun. Oh, you'd be wonderful. Because I could talk, 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 talk. Well, uh, no, and you're just, you're, you're such a natural with this. Oh, I, I think you should do your own, like, late night show. Oh, that would be fun. About the brains that never die. Yes, and that, but you could come out and do a monologue. Yes, right? that would be fun. Do a monologue. And uh, you know, guests. I like television, and I, I think entertainment is a really great way to get a lot of information out there about sometimes things we really don't want to have conversations about. Right. But if it's told in an entertaining way um, through the drama of television and the movies, I learned that with Aaron Brockovich, that um, it's a good platform. And you've been doing this and you're going to be doing more and we're going to talk about that in a bit, but yeah. you've done so many documentaries. I mean, I've been a part of a lot of documentaries, right. yes I have, which I, I truly enjoy. And these filmmakers just come and say, oh, we need Aaron Brockovich for this because this is important. Well, they just email me. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're out there uncovering stuff that is an issue that affects everybody in the U.S. and can affect everybody globally. And the documentary filmmakers will start moving in. And so they like to interview us because right. we've been down on the ground for so long. Right. Well, you know, I like to talk about the entertainment aspect because that's what sure. we do. But she does some important work. I mean, you've like you've you've saved thousands of lives, I think, maybe millions. Well, you know, I I just believe that I believe in people, and look, I'm just a mom. That that's how everything started for me in Hinkley. I was a mom. Um, well, I'm a sister. So I have Mother kids. Nature. I'm a grandmother, but I care about people. So I get involved and we give them information and awareness. And for me, it's amazing to watch other people rise. Oftentimes we don't know things that are going on. Oftentimes outside of entertainment, if you will, it's so daunting and overwhelming. People turn it off. They don't want to listen. But right. if you can engage them in a story, whether it be television, drama or film, entertainment, what we're doing, it's a platform to, right. to get information out there and oftentimes they'll pick it up and they'll go out and start making a change themselves because that's what it's going to take. I let everyone know. I am the bearer of bad news. Right. Superman's Well, we're going to talk coming. some more about that bad news. <laughs> but we've got to get back to this film, Brain That Wouldn't oh, Die. Good yeah. things are going to happen. Jan in the pan. You're going to love it. Really? It's you wonderful. Sure? Absolutely. I don't well, know. Well, he's body hunting, so. Oh, that's just so Maybe. wrong. It is wrong. All right, <laughs> off we go. Back to the brain that wouldn't die. We'll be right back.
behind that door. Horror. No normal mind can imagine. Something even more terrible than you. No, my deformed friend. Like all quantities, horror has its ultimate. And I'm that. No. There is a horror beyond yours. And it's in there. Locked behind that door. The paths of experimentation twist and turn through mountains of miscalculation and often lose themselves in error and darkness. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Courtner's mistakes. He had no right to bring me back to this. Perhaps not. Who knows? But you should know that before he injected the serum into that, it was but a mass of grafted tissues, lifeless. Just lay there, weighted down with its transplants of broken limbs and amputated arms. But with this serum, it, it began to breathe. It's impossible. Would you have thought possible what he's already done? Take yourself. He's brought you back. You live. Only a few years ago, all transplants were impossible. That's what he's been doing up here where no one could see his work. Yes. Experimenting with transplants on that. And on me. Letting him tear away my flesh time after time. Test after test. My hopes shattering with each grafted arm he fastened to me. Watching it wither and warp. Instead of strengthening. You see, he's learned from his mistakes. And you stayed with him. Helping him in his grotesque work that he claims is for science. Was there a place for me on the outside with this? In the world where eyes would look upon me with pity and people would turn away from me in disgust? No. The alcoholic has his bottle. The dope addict his needle. I had my research. I used to be a surgeon. It was my life. And one night in the laboratory there, there was an accident. They had to amputate my arm. And he has used you to... I have no choice. He was my only hope. A surgeon needs both his arms, not just one. Well, you see, my transplanted grotesqueness stayed, and so did I. I live only for the day he can work a successful transplant to my body. That is why I stay. Transplant my head onto another body? Yes. And he's insane with the belief he can do it. But the tissues of my body would reject the tissues of another. Reject it as the foreign substance it is. The transplant would never take it, would never stay in place. My blood's antibodies would attack it as they attack any invading matter. Yes, but his new discovery, this new serum, may change all that. This serum injected into the bloodstream affects the lymphoid tissues. Here, in the neck. The lymphoids that provide the antibodies for the blood that attack foreign transplanted matter. It was untested, untried, till we used it on you. So, that liquid in the blood that's being pumped through what's left of me is what makes me feel the... <laughs> he may produce results he didn't ask for. Results? You mean, like this? Results 
is more terrible than your arm of relative beauty. Results of power. Of magnitude. Power. What power? Can't you see that you're at the mercy of every element of the universe? How can you speak of power? I have a power. This liquid that he's pumped into me. My brain burns with it. That thing inside an iron touch. Want me to prove it? You can prove nothing. You're powerless. I'll show you how powerless I am. You. Behind that door. Let me know if you hear me. Whoever, whatever you are, I command you. You understand me. I'm only a head, and you're whatever you are. Together we're strong, more powerful than any of them. What are you running from? What's wrong with you? <clears throat> Something beyond control in that room. There's nothing beyond my control. She's alive and I'll keep her alive until I find her a body. I can't talk anymore. I'm tired. I've got to go to sleep. Then you... you didn't find her a body? Well, I've got to be careful. I can't afford to be identified as the last person seen with a girl before she disappears. Do you think you'll get one? There are many things left for tomorrow. about to call a cop the way you were looking me over. How have you been, Bill? Oh, just fine, Donna. I haven't seen you for quite a while. Too long. I'm still waiting for that call you once promised me. Well, you know how it is with interns. All work. All work and no play even makes for dull doctors. You're gonna lose that bedside manner of yours. <laughs> Say, how about a little side course in anatomy? Yours? Anytime. No, not mine. A body beautiful contest. You know, bathing suit models, plenty of females on the hoof. Your eyes will have a field day. Interested? Well, why not? You're just what the doctor ordered. Come on, jump in. Uh, on second thought, I just remembered I've got to stop by my place and take care of a few things. It'll only take a minute. You don't mind, do you? I always follow the doctor's orders. Anything you prescribe, I'll take. That's what I like about you, Donna. Always so obliging. Hey, Donna, where are you going? What's the hurry? Hi, Jeannie. We're going to look for some bodies. You mean the contest? Yeah. Got any room for me? Oh, sure. Plenty. Bill, this is Jeannie Reynolds. Jeannie, this is Dr. Hi. Bill Corner. Hello. Hop in, but first we've got to stop off at his place. Sure. Well, as a matter of fact, I can wait. 
Now that there's two of you, we'll have to wait. Guess he thinks there's safety in numbers. Well, this time there is. We promise not to hurt you. And I promise not to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Walter, and I'm calling from Colfax, California. Just called to tell you you're doing a hell of a job. I sure like that little firecracker, Tangerine, and that tall fellow, Biddleton. Well, keep up the good work. Goodbye. Now, I've seen this film once before, Erin, and I know there's a mutant behind that door, but you know, you wouldn't know just from a talking head and a Spoiler alert. Well, I mean, people could tell by the sound. It's a, gotta be a mutant, right? I, I, yeah, it's something gory. So I'm if you sure. lost your head, would you like allow it to be placed in the pan? I, I lose my head every day. My kids will tell you, mom loses it every day. She lost her head. Well, we were, we were chatting at the break, and you were telling me that you get recognized sometimes, but not for the right reasons. <laughs> you know, we don't have enough time for me to tell you all the bizarre stories that have happened to me, but yeah, it's really true. I mean, when the film first came out, I had a group of, they were actually younger girls come up to me and go, oh my gosh, I loved your movie, and I used your thigh master oh, all no. the time. <laughs> they thought you were Suzanne, Suzanne Summers. Summers. I'm like, uh... Wrong girl, but okay. I, I've had people come up to me and say, did anyone ever tell you you look just like Aaron Brockovich? And no. Like, I am Aaron Brockovich. And they're like, no, that's Julia Roberts. So I'm like, what the, why did you just come up to me and say I look like Aaron Brockovich? That's insane. It's so weird. Uh, there's been days I have to like go, am I Aaron? Who am I? It's bizarre. True story. <laughs> just this past weekend, I was going down an escalator and some gentlemen were going up and they turned to me and they went, oh, it's Stormy Daniels. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that is. I don't even know how you make those associations, but yes. Well, I, I suppose Strange she's got things. lots of blonde hair and. Blonde hair, you know, mm. it, it's, it's just, I guess, a look. So how do you react when people misidentify you? Are you offended? Are you amused? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. Some of it I do find funny. When someone says to me, you, anyone ever tell you you look like Aaron Brockovich? My response to them is, no, but I've been told I look like Julia Roberts. And they're like, no, you don't. I mean, That's... it's, no, I'm not offended at all. I'm Listen, the whole thing has been so surreal. Right. Uh, and just, I don't know, you've got to find some humor in some of the stuff. It must so. be quite an adventure to go from relative obscurity to... It was. I, I'm actually glad you asked mm -hmm. that because many people don't. Um, it was very overwhelming. Right. When I went to the movie premiere, oh my gosh. I mean, I, was, I didn't prepare for this. Mm. I literally got thrown into it. First of all, I didn't even think it was going to happen because, you know, Carla Schomburg, who was the executive producer, let me know. You know, more often than not, Hollywood buys film rights, but they never make it. Right. So I d wasn't counting on it. I just went about my life. So the idea that it just showed up like it did, they moved so fast, Julia Roberts, Steven Soderbergh, I mean, it was, it was such, such a success. Hype. Um, and I, I, I remember the night of the, you know, big premiere, and my limo pulled up and Steven Soderbergh got me, and he was walking along with me, and I couldn't figure out, because he was kind of like blocking me, and I, I could hear this commotion. And so just as we turn, to go there, and I'm starting to see what's happening. He's like, you okay with your picture being taken? I'm like, actually, no, I don't like my picture being taken. He said, we're gonna have to get over it. Boom! Now, and it was like a feeding frenzy. I got so overwhelmed, I was honestly shaking. I, I couldn't stop. Um, quite a few people said to me, if we can't get you to stop, we should probably send you home. I, I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I was just doing, for me, the right thing. Um, I was a single mom, born and raised in Kansas. Uh, it, it was overwhelming, and 
it's still somewhat overwhelming. Instant stardom. It, Sometimes it's not always a good thing. No, you know, it, uh, mm. it's not. I think that, you know, everyone thinks that, you know, because if you're famous or you've had a film made about you, listen, I, <laughs> everyone thinks, you know, oh, you're still doing this today. you got hundreds of millions of dollars. Why haven't you gone on roading off in the sunset? Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I am still out there working. I mean, right. it wasn't that kind of fairy tale, right. but it was a fairy tale in a sense that, and, and it's, I, I'm always uncomfortable with this. It was, it's never about me. It, it was about a situation that happened to people. And it was about an underdog rising. Right. And I think that the people were the underdog. I was the underdog. We had no business doing that, but we just stood up for something that was right. You and I think it. the world is full of those people. Well, it, it's lucky the world has people like you to stick up for the rest of us. Right. Well, you know, unlike Jen in the pan. <laughs> oh well, she's got she's got problems. She's got apparently. big problems. So Can't all right, we're gonna talk some up. more about what you're doing to make the world better when cool. we come back from the next break. But we gotta get back to Jen in the pan and, and the. And brain I talk as much as she do. does. But we love it. No, you can talk. It's less work for me if you talk. We like it. All right, off we go back to the brain that wouldn't die. Stay with us. we're about ready to go. Backstage are five of the girls who have reached the contest finals, and we are here to choose Miss Body Beautiful. Now, we've eliminated everyone except the five finalists, and they will be judged solely by your applause. So let's bring them on. First, Helen Appleton. Second to you? No, another girl, a figure model. You remember that one in school years ago? The one who had the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doris, uh... Doris Powell. Yeah, is she still around? Few people see her nowadays. She just stays in her studio posing for art classes and camera bugs. A figure model. Poses for art classes. The nicest body she's ever seen. The nicest body. Maybe this is the one she's got to be. I can keep Jan alive only for a few more hours. I've got to find her a body. Tends to kill somebody, to rob them of their body. Do you hear me? Yes, you hear me. You know how Bill's egotism drives him on and on to infamy upon infamy. Who could ever be born of? Evil. Yet he claims his work is for science, for humanity. To be joined to flesh not your own. 
what's human in this? Of how you must exist, locked behind that door. We've got to stop him. Okay, boys, I've had it for tomorrow. Come on, baby, one more. Just one more, please. Another five minutes, baby. Time's just about up anyway. Okay. Say, Doris, would you like to have a drink with me? Just you and me, away from everybody? Some place where nobody will butt in with. You and I can really be alone. No, thank you. How about posing for me? Private-like. I'll pay you real money. Real good money. The kind of money they don't throw at you every day. And for doing hardly nothing at all. I do my posing for classes only, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 8 to 10. Yeah, I know, but we can... Good night. See it all, mister. The show's over. Next time, bring a camera and buy a ticket. I'm not running a charity. You don't remember me, do you, Doris? Every guy on the make gives me that same tired line. I'm Bill Courtner. Bill Courtner. Long time ago, that fight. He almost tore that wise guy apart for making fun of me. After my accident. Look, uh, can't we go somewhere and talk? No, I don't date men. Because I pose like I do. Your mind works overtime. You get ideas. You're all alike. Oh, not all of us. I'm not on the make for you. Okay, so maybe you're better than most. Maybe not. I still hate all men. I hate them for what one did to me once. Have you forgotten? Well, have you? No, I haven't forgotten. Well, neither have I. I carry the memory around with me. But you can't hide yourself away here forever, posing bare in front of a bunch of neurotics. Listen, Galahad. I trusted a man once, all the way. What did it get me? He gets his head full of jealous lies, and I You've get... You've got to forget what How happened. can I forget? I carry the memory around with me. Come 
am I so appealing to you now? Still so interested. Doesn't it make you sick? You don't even turn away from me, like everyone else does. To me, you're not ugly. I see only beauty in you. You have a lovely body and a face that can be made beautiful again also. Yeah. I've heard that song before. I'm a doctor, I know. My father's one of the leading plastic surgeons. If anyone can help you, we can. I know I can. I've been to doctors. It's no use. The scar tissue's too deep. No one can help me. Oh. Oh, that was a few years ago. Today, nothing's hopeless. Uh, we can graft scar and skin tissue that... Well, we can even freeze areas of the skin and sand away damaged skin tissues. The way you say that, that look in your eyes, I almost want to believe you. I almost want to believe you. Well, then start believing, hmm? Even if your father could help me, I couldn't pay him the kind of money it would take. Don't talk about money. He does a lot of work without any charge. Why should you want to do this for me? What's in it for you? I'm going to make your face beautiful again. Cut it off and give your body away. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I have been knocked around so many times. I've lost count. It's tough living with this. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Well, because you've been battered around, don't go sour. You shouldn't lose your trust in people. Not all of us. I believe you. I want to. Do you really think something can be done? Only my father knows. Look, we have a country place just out of town. He's visiting for the weekend. I could take you there now for a consultation. You mean tonight? Well, if you'd rather wait till he comes back, if oh, he no, comes no. back. Oh, no, no. I mean, he wouldn't be annoyed being bothered with me so late at night. Well, you let me do the worrying, hmm? I'll do anything that'll help me get rid of this face. <laughs> well, that's where I come in. Remember the last time I helped you? Where are you going? Who are you calling? My girlfriend. I want to tell her the news. Before you know what the verdict's going to be? You're right. I, I shouldn't talk until I know what's going to happen. My girlfriend, she's supposed to drop in later. I'll have to leave her a note or something. Well, just tell her you'll see you later. Otherwise, she'll ask a lot of nosy questions. We want to be sure first. Just throw something on, huh? I'll be with you in a minute. Just tell her you'll keep in touch. I'll leave it on the table. She'll see it. Had to go out with old friend Bill Courtner. We'll call you tomorrow. Doris. Here. I'll leave it on the lamp. She'll see it, won't she? That's the first place she'll look. I'll leave the lights on for her. <laughs> I have waited so long for this. So have I. You've got to see mine. Wonder which of us is more awful. 
Nothing you can be is more terrible than what I am. A head without a body. A head that should be in its grave. I hate him. I hate him for what he's done to me. Can your horror match mine? Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are still watching The Brain That Wouldn't Die with Yay. Miss Erin Brockovich. The brain that doesn't die. So you're so busy, but we're lucky to have you up in the area today. I'm glad to be here. Well, what you. are you doing up here besides well, our show? Well, I've been working with um, the community and um, the law to work with them through the horrible fires that this occurred whole last year. The fire nonsense. The whole fire situation. That was devastating. Well, it would have to be devastating. It was devastating. You know, we remind ourselves what 49 people were killed. Right. Uh, the destruction to homes and people's lives and the environment. It was horrific. It was, it was like the worst fire disaster in California. It was a right? firestorm. It was scary. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I was down in Los Angeles watching and we were scared for everybody. I right. had family up here. It was a very scary situation. So you're up advocating for victims of the fire? Victims the of the fire, the communities, working with mm -hmm. the law. You know, right. there's a very nasty defendant involved, if you ask me, at specific guests, an electric. Oh, and you've had experience with I them. I have had experience with them, kind Quite of all the way back to the bit. film, Aaron Brockovich. Right. So um, I'm not a fan of Pacific Gas and Electric. So you're here to make things right. Absolutely. You know, I talk about that. It's not right, left. It's right, wrong. Look, this company failed to maintain their power lines, and they should be held responsible for a firestorm and a disastrous situation like this. They're, they're a company I would not want to model after, period. No. Right, right. So that's what we're, that's why I'm up here. So I come up every month. I have to tell you, it's beautiful here. The people are beautiful. You should move They're here. strong. You, you know, should I've come. thought about that. You should do it. You Ooh, belong here. Oh, yeah, great. You can stay in yeah. the mansion. Hey, really? We've got, we've got an extra wing that we what don't even that? use. You can, you can have a whole Brain wing to thing yourself. Brain doesn't show up. <laughs> no, well, so okay. You've got to put up with horror head films. talking to me. You've got to put up with horror <laughs> films. Just once a week, though, on Saturdays, <laughs> okay. you have That's to watch good. a horror film with us. If and Tangella, you have to put up with Tangella. Okay. You know, she's trouble, but uh, she's good trouble. <laughs> no, most people find her most entertaining. You know what? It, because she doesn't speak. Well, you know, the, she doesn't speak to you because she doesn't know you yet. But when she begins to speak, <laughs> you're going to say, I liked you better when you did not speak. <laughs> that's been my experience and, and Livingston's experience. Yeah. So we'll see. But we'll see. In but that's case, why I'm here. Well, that's absolutely For Santa Rosa and all the communities. Fabulous. Dude. All right. Well, we're going to give websites and stuff for that in the next segment so Good. people can learn right. more. But, uh, I'll stay tuned. I think we need to finish this film. Right. Oh, happy days. Love to. Off we go. Back to the brain that wouldn't die. Stay with us. I have come to feed your friend. While you feed yourself with hate, it prefers food. Your former sniveling fear becomes you more. Yeah. What makes you think I'm afraid of what's in there? Or of you? A mere head in search of a body. People fear what they don't understand. And what they can't see. 
What are you talking about? You're nothing but a freak of life. And a freak of death. Why should I be afraid of a few knocks on a door? But last night you ran. You were afraid of what you imagined lay behind that door. I? Imagined? It was I who helped graft together the bits and pieces that were stolen from the hospital. An amputated arm, a leg, a torso. It was I who helped piece them together like a monstrous jigsaw puzzle. And that same medicine that he's fed to me to activate my lymphoid tissues, has he fed it to that? No. No, on that he used an earlier formula. It wasn't as successful as the serum he's using on you. But it uh, was enough to allow the transplants to take. If your experiment is successful, oh, then it'll be my turn. And what else has happened to it? What do you mean, what else? Well, it's... It's mutated some, of course. It's changed considerably. Why don't you open the door? And we'll both see how it's changed. Listen, you. I warn you. You better stop pestering me, do you hear? I'm getting fed up with you and your insidious talk. He should have cut out your tongue while he was at it. Afraid? Afraid of whom? Of you? No. Not anymore. But of it. Nor of it. Keeps it locked in there so that it'll be safe, that's all. Safe? From me? <laughs> you beast. I hope he prolongs your existence into a lifetime of agony. Then we'll see who's laughing at whom. You miserable fool! Get him!
You and your father live here? Only on weekends when we want to get away from the city. This place certainly is lonely. Well, the further from prying eyes, the better. I mean, it's nice and quiet here. We can get away from the noise and telephones. Oh, I guess it is. Well, sit down, sit down. I'll fix us a drink, huh? My father should be back soon. You mean he's not here now? Oh, come on now, Doris. Do I look like a maniac who goes around killing girls? Now you've got to learn to trust people. Oh, people like me, really. I'm sorry. I trust you. I trust you with my life. Well, I can't ask for any more than that. I'll be right back. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. Forgotten you? Why, Doris, you've become very important to me. Very important. I put a little water in it so it wouldn't be too strong for you. Fine. I'm not a very heavy drinker. Neither am I. Well, um, here's to your future, whatever it may be. I'll drink to that.
getting awfully warm in here. in my drink. I'd bring you a body. A beautiful one. Soon it will be yours. Bill, you can't. Yes, I can. I want you as a complete woman, not part of one. Is it a crime to want to keep you alive? Is it a crime for science to jump ahead by years? This kind of thing must be done. When it's over, you'll see. I've got to hurry now. The drug will wear off soon and she'll be awake. When she does come to, it will be your head consciously awakening for her.
Would you to let me die? <laughs> and so ends Jen in the pan. You know, she was like a roast. <laughs> She was roasted. It was you knew like, that was coming. <laughs> no, it was like a Thanksgiving meal of some kind. That she was prepared. That's terrible. Good ones, sir. Uh. You know, we're joined by Livingston and Tangella because they just wanted to hang out with Aaron. You know, two mm -hmm. of my favorite troublemakers. I know. But you mm -hmm. create corporate trouble. She just terrorizes the neighborhood. Sure. She well, does. you know, people get uncomfortable when someone doesn't, you know, respond. It's oh, nerve wracking. The problem is she responds too heavily. She likes explosives. She uses them. It's, <laughs> and you know, it's not so bad when we need to like move a large amount of soil. <laughs> but you she know, she can do it. She she got our closest neighbor to move. Well, we all get along very well. We do, mm -hmm. we do. Yes. But you're busy with new things. New things on the horizon. There are new things on the horizon. You know, I continue to do my environmental work. I've been out right. on the lecture circuit for 18 years. I've right. got a wonderful new book coming out. We hope next spring. What's it called? Uh, you know, we go back and forth with titles. It's not named yet, but it's the truth of our water supply. And as daunting as that may sound, uh, there is a lot of hope, a lot of information, a lot of science, a lot of policy we teach. Um, I'm really, really proud of the book. And, and so you expect the, this to come out when? Well, we were hoping for spring. Um, we we could year. get delayed to fall, right. but I'm very, very proud of this project. And then we got some fun stuff working but I can't say anything yet isn't that right. wrong but I even bring it up if I can't say it anything. involves you and cameras maybe I don't know something fun I hear all right so but yeah that's um, all we can say stay but tuned how about that when when can we expect some kind of announcement maybe maybe early 2019 January well that's not too far it's not off too far so stay tuned it's I'll like it's just a slightly you have me back, late I'll come back Christmas present Yes, it's yes. a good New Year's And we'll gift. have you back so you can tell us everything. I'd, I'd love to. All the full details. All right, All so right. if people want to learn more about what you're doing now, where do they go? I don't like keep a lot of what I'm doing now up on my website. Um, I'm on my public Facebook page a lot, but right. certainly why I'm here, um, and it's my focus has been the issue of the fires, would be pgelawsuit.com. Okay, so that's pgelawsuit.com. I believe that's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No. Well, so it sounds I should, like I should. I hope I know it. But listen, honestly, I think it's really important for people to be able to go there, especially for those impacted by the fires. Right. Uh, they'll learn a lot. We we can help. Um, they often have many questions. So PG and you're, you're doing like seminars and presentations, so they could come meet you if they. Absolutely, like. we do that up here. It's really important. You know, we have forgotten about. You know. We need to get reconnected with our communities and our neighbors, and it will take a disaster like this, and you see that happening here, and, and we, we want to be a part of it and help them along. So if they go to that website, they could see a schedule. They could see it. I love how you say schedule. And you could, yes. you could like, meet Aaron Brockovich. Well, be Aaron Brockovich. Right? We're here to help you. She's here to help everyone. So. All right, well, you've been absolutely wonderful, as we knew you would be, well, and... Uh, We'll have you back again when we can hear more about this uh -huh. secret project of yours. We want to I hear look forward it to all. It. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Aaron. As far as you guys are concerned, you know what I'm going to say. We want to see you next week. Make sure you don't miss it. It's going to be fun. We won't have a better guest, but I think we might, just might, have a better film. So, Ooh. see you then. So, Aaron, you know Julia Roberts, and you know her quite well. I was wondering... What if you could possibly talk her into making an appearance on our show? No. <laughs>